Members, the House and Committee on the Limitation Bill. Chair. Good morning. Point of, point of order. Point of order. Chris Tremaine. Um, thank you, Mr Chair. I seek leave for the committee stage of the Limitation Bill to be taken as one question with multiple calls. Leave is sought. Members, leave is sought that the that uh, that the provisions be taken as one debate, that is parts one to four, the schedule and clauses one and two. Leave is sought for that purpose. Is there any objection? There is no objection. The question is that parts one to four, the schedule and clauses one and two stand part. Mr. Chairman. The Honourable Christopher Finland. Mr Chairman, I won't uh, speak at any length on part one, which simply outlines the preliminary provisions, but I would want to say something about part two, which is in many respects the core of the bill uh, and sets out uh, that uh, there are to be defences to money claims. Uh, people will have six years from the events on which a claim is based to bring the claim before a defendant can argue that the claim is time barred. If the claimant didn't know about the claim within this time, they have an extra three-year late knowledge period in which to make the claim. However, and as has been referred to by a number of speakers in the second reading, after 15 years from the date of those events, the defendant can argue that the claim is time barred and money claims are defined in Clause 11. I hear what uh, Mr Parker uh, said in his second reading speech, and uh, can I indicate to him how grateful I was for the very useful discussion that we did have about Clause 16, which I think improved it. But um, I do take issue with him over the, uh, the different periods. Uh, it all depends, at the end of the day, on the policy considerations governing uh, a particular piece of legislation. This, is, uh, this sets out the general rules of limitation. Uh, there are nonetheless uh, specific limitation periods in specific statutes for particular policy reasons. So, for example, in the Fair Trading Act, the period within which one can bring a claim is three years. Uh, in the Commerce Act, there are, as I recall, uh, a number of different periods because of the requirements of that legislation in the Family Protection Act. Uh, there's a, a particular uh, limitation period which differs from what's contained in this legislation. So uh, uniformity, I think, is to be encouraged, and I'm certainly, uh, it's one of the reasons why we've uh, dealt with this uh, legislation, because while it may seem to be uh, rather boring technical legislation, it actually has uh, very real consequences for people uh, when they seek to bring claims in court. But um, in, in, in my opinion, I think there is a difference between the 10-year period uh, set out in the Building Act and the 15-year period here. As I say, this is uh, a statute of general um, applicability. The second point I want to address uh, concerns Clause 16, which is uh, a very important uh, clause. Um, and uh, Mr Parker has uh, accurately outlined the uh, the way in which this legislation has developed, and in particular the way in which Clause 16 uh, was amended in the Select Committee. Uh, in one of the early drafts of the bill, Clause 16 wasn't there at all, uh, and then it was decided to uh, provide a clause which uh, gave a discretion to allow relief for a claim of sexual abuse of a minor because of the particularly horrific nature of that kind of, uh, uh, of proceeding. Uh, but it has been broadened out, uh, and a number of changes have uh, emerged as a result of the Select Committee's deliberations. Importantly, uh, and this is uh, brought out in Clause 16A, there's the omission of the requirement that the strength of the uh, claimant's case uh, is to be a matter which is to be taken into account in exercising its discretion. And as Mr Parker said, it widens the scope of Clause 16 to include physical and psychological abuse of minors by parents, step-parents and close relatives or associates. And it extends the discretion to allow relief for claims for personal injury caused by gradual process infection or disease not covered uh, by 
accident compensation. So it's a very important change, uh, and uh, I agree with speakers who uh, contributed during the second reading uh, that it does improve uh, the legislation. How many claims there will be? Uh, well, who knows? Uh, but um, th this is a particularly specialised form of harm, and uh, it's appropriate that we provide for it uh, in this legislation. Call the Honourable David Parker.